how to love, learn to recognize what is love and what is something else. Some people confuse love with feelings of lust, just purely sexual interest, ownership or control, codependency or manipulative motivators, worry, e.g. over-involved parenting or a spouse always checking up, neediness, e.g. insecurity or low self-esteem and so forth. Yet love is only possible when you don't need others to define who you are or need others to conform to your view of the world. Love isn't a tool for people, for using people or binding them to your side. If you find yourself calling such actions love, then it isn't love. Begin by loving yourself. You can only truly love another being when you love yourself properly. Otherwise, you risk spending a lot of your time projecting inner hurts, pain, and other negative emotions onto other people seeing the worst in them so as to avoid facing it in yourself. Loving yourself is not about putting yourself before others. That's another form of confusion. Loving yourself is about having self-respect, discovering what really makes you tick and spending your life being true to your real talents. It's not about putting yourself down and not comparing yourself to others. Once you learn to love yourself, you will be free of any sense of feeling threatened by others' success, real or apparent, and you will be able to share freely of your love with them. Love you, man. Back at you, dude. <laughs> to love truly is not only having the capacity to give love, but also to gracefully open your heart to receive love. Know that, know that you deserve love. You are worthy of love. The more you feel the love in your heart, the greater you are able to give more love to others. Actively show love. Love doesn't just reveal itself through good vibes. It's an active emotion that constantly needs constant input, stoking, and tending. It blossoms with attention and shows through the things we do and say to other people each day. Ultimately, you are the one who must take action in order to discover love. Show your devotion to others by being considerate, respectful, and thoughtful of their needs, by doing little acts of random kindness, and by showing them that you care about their well-being. Tell people you love them as often as possible. Regularly say, I love you to your child, your parents, your lover, your spouse, your friend, etc., and there are other ways to express love when I love you doesn't seem appropriate or lacks the clarity on the breadth of your love for the person, such as, you mean a great deal to me, you inspire me, you're the most amazing person I've ever known, and I'm a better person for having known you, and so forth. When you say the words I love you, say them with real conviction. You're not telling a person that you love them just because you want them, you want, because you want to feel good. You're saying it because you want the other person to feel good. So you don't say, I love you, to feel good for yourself. You say, I love you because you're a great person. You're a good person. So, uh, number five, love unconditionally. Love is an action from which you should not expect returns. If you cannot love another person without attaching stipulations, such as expecting to be loved in equal measure in return, then it is not love at all, but deep-seated opportunism, namely making the most of an advantage and being unmindful of others. If your interest is not in the other person as such, but rather in how that person can enhance your experience of life, then it is not unconditional. If you only love others for how they can ensure your well-being, you do not know love. If you have no intention of improving that person's life or allowing that person to be themselves and accepting them as they are and not who you want them to be, then you are not striving to love them unconditionally. If you profess to love others as a means of gaining power over them, then it is not love but manipulation. Expecting nothing in return doesn't mean you should allow someone to mistreat or undervalue you. It means that giving love does not guarantee receiving love. Try loving just for the sake of love. Realize that someone may have a different way of showing his or her love for you. Do not expect to be loved back in exactly the same way. Be tolerant. Love is about acceptance and tolerance. You cannot say in one breath that you are a loving and caring person and in the other breath say that you hate a particular person or type of person. To do so is to deny the reality of love, which is accepting of even the things you find hard to love in another person. More importantly, love does not compartmentalize. It sees a person as a whole rather than focusing on a part you dislike and turning that dislike part into a person's whole. Love doesn't judge. It tolerates the differences, accepting the choices people make for themselves in life. You may have heard someone say that they love a person, but they do not like them. In this case, the speaker is likely telling you that they do not accept the person and respect the dignity of that person as a whole, <laughs> but that they couldn't get along with that person or that they disagree with much that this person thinks or that they would never choose to spend time with them in companionship. Love doesn't ask you to befriend a person. It asks you to tolerate, to think beyond your own notions of how the world should be and to accept differences without judging. Empathize. Put yourself in someone else's shoes. Rather than imposing your own expectations or attempting to control another person's viewpoints or lifestyle, seek to understand how they feel, where they come from, and who they are. Realize how... 
They could also love you back just as well if you open the way. Seven, love those who don't love you. This one's a hard one. I disagree. One thing they said above that I disagree with was that um, hating something you isn't, you know, love. Love is about loving all and loving anything. Uh, while love is universal like that, loving humanity and loving everybody and loving every person and even finding humanity which is within the barbaric people in our society, I think love does uh, does teach you to hate because anything that hurts something that you love, you should hate. If you truly love something or somebody or an idea or humanity and somebody or something, a corporation is hurting humanity, you should hate that corporation. You should hate that corporation and you should do something to stop that corporation from hurting the thing that you love. So your anger should drive you to stop uh, any of the bad, evil things or people or actions from happening to the things, people or humanity uh, that you love. So, carrying on. Love those who don't love you. So, I, 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 while I believe what I just said, I also believe, like, loving your enemy, that's Jesus' notion, to love your enemy, that's what he says. And I think that's extraordinarily revolutionary. Because I think that's the only way a bad person can ever get better is with love. So, if a bad person is put into a loveless environment, you can punish them and make it so miserable that it will straighten them up and force them to do good. But if you want them to feel complete and whole as a person to get uh, you know, get whatever it is that they're lacking to get that emotion and that love to fulfill that vacuum of emptiness that they've always felt, that you have to show even the most heinous people uh, a degree or a modicum of love. Because that's the only hope for mankind. That's all we got. Love. Um, you know, we got logic and science, but none of, none of that means anything if there's no love. It's all about love. It's all about the love. So, uh, love teaches you that hateful people are often driven by a lack of self-respect and they are churned up on all the things they don't like about themselves, causing them to project this hate onto others. Of all people, haters need your compassion the most. And it is love that leads to compassionate responses. Whereas hate is directed towards you, repel it with love and use your hatred as motivation to show that tolerance, kindness, and acceptance are better ways to get along in our community. Get off me. I love you. Accept risk. You cannot love without accepting that there is always a chance of loss uh, of the love or of being hurt. That is what makes love so powerful, though. We risk much because the reward of love is so great, and in losing love at times in life, you learn to appreciate the love you do have even more. And you also learn that at times in life, it is better to let go than to force someone to love you. More importantly, you have a choice. You have a choice to let a loss of love ruin you for all times, perhaps becoming like Miss Haveness Ham in Great Expectations embittered all her life, emotionally stuck at the time of the loss, or you can make the choice to learn from hurtful experiences, however difficult the lesson, and move on to discover the many other people who won't reject your love and who will give freely of theirs. Think how lucky you are to have people in your life to love. Never seek to make an idol out of any person you love. This is likely to lose a person in the long run as they'll feel pressure to live up to something you've imposed upon them. Let them be who they really are around you. That's a true expression of love. Make your love your eternal thing. Make love your eternal thing. Never stop loving other people who are in your life and who come and go. By sharing love around, you create a loving environment and you inspire others to do the same thing. You also show the best reflection of your worth to others when you love. More people showing love in our world means endless forgiveness, a willingness to give people second chances, and a commitment to moving humanity forward, ever striving for greater harmony. Jean Anula once observed that love is, above all, the gift of oneself. <laughs> so giving yourself to somebody is the best gift that love can give to somebody else. And giving the best of who you really are to others in the name of love, you transcend selfish motives and introspection and truly seek to appreciate others. Love is a means by which you start to see things more clearly together, to reach compromises or to collaborate and to make room for finding a way forward that includes others and not just your ego. People become beautiful to you when you love them. In a society obsessed with appearance, it can often seem the other way around, but really the reality is that love makes a person beautiful 
and the imperfect perfect. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I think I got a, a great catch. I got a my love is beautiful and smart and funny. Um, so there's one saying, it's like you don't go after for something beautiful. You go for somebody that makes your world beautiful. I think I got it both ways. I got somebody that is beautiful that I am attracted to. Um, but I also have somebody that makes my world gorgeous. It makes my world spectacular and wonderful. So because I have this feeling of confidence and oneness with myself, I, I give that back to her. So thank you, Amal Gali, for loving me. I love your love. That's why I give myself to you. So that's how you love. So love is the action. Love, you do it fully from the bottom of your heart. It says even to love your enemies, it's saying that eternal love, the Jesus love, which I probably need to work on, because when you get injured, your first reaction is to injure the other person. At least it's mine. That's my reaction at first. But the uh, in the long run, the person who loves the person that injures will eventually get to that person. or Or they'll leave them, and that act of leaving is enough resistance to say, well, Maybe they didn't like me hurting them. So, but it, I feel like hate can beget, beget more hate, and what it can do is it either will shut them down and say, okay, I'm being a dick and I deserve what had happened. Um, but then what? What's next? So you can, you know, kind of like a praise sandwich, you can kind of, uh, you know, hate back someone that's hating you, hate them back, show them love, and if that love isn't reciprocated or if it's not, there, there's no hope for it. Always love yourself. Maintain your own dignity. Don't allow yourself to be injured. And stay away and get away. So, love, 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 love. Che Guevara, love, love. He says, ironic as it sounds, the true revolutionary has great feelings of love. This Oprah article sounds really good. I might be able to get to a little bit of it. I'm going to read some Emma Goldman quotes. Emma Goldman, who is instructing much of my uh, ideals about love. And that wiki, How to Love, was a pretty good write-up about love. Um, and the definition, Merriam-Webster and uh, Wikipedia, wiki how, I think it was wiki how that taught how to love. So wiki how and Wikipedia. And Merriam-Webster and Emma Goldman and, you know, bits and pieces of love here and there that I've got to experience in my life. I've seen love. I've been around love. Um, but I'm not sure if it's enough, so that's why I'm learning about love in order to be a better lover. So, to the indefinite, uncertain mind of the American radical, the most contradictory ideas and methods are possible. The result is a sad chaos in the radical movement, a sort of intellectual hash which has neither taste nor character, to the moralist prostitution does not consist so much in the fact that the woman sells her body, but rather that she sells it out of wedlock. When we can't dream any longer, we die. So, we always have to have hope. Struggle is the essential characteristic of our existence, to always struggle, to take our licks, to rope a dope them, be like Muhammad Ali and, and dodge the punches, and then uh, when they're not expecting it, get them with a couple jabs, uppercut. Right. Well, woman essentially a purist is naturally bigoted and relentless in her effort to make others as good as she thinks they ought to be. So, a woman is essentially a purist and is naturally bigoted and relentless in her effort to make others as good as she thinks that they ought to be. So, a woman wants to make other people as good as she feels that they should be. Women need not always keep their mouths shut and their wounds open. So, Emma Goldman quotes, brainy quotes, 1445, I Louisville, viva la revolucion. Hasta la siempre, I think. I don't know. 
Occupy. Viva la Revolution, Louisville.